Caution, the Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. And, besides that, he's really weird. Welcome to the Mark Gunger Show with international marriage speaker and author of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, Mark Gunger. This is your source for practical, down-to-earth marriage advice without all the over-spiritualization or romantic nonsense. And now the host of the Mark Gunger Show, Mark Gunger. You missed it? What? <laughs> I was going to give the, my typical crash, and my ears went dead all of a sudden. Oh. And now they're back. Hello! Okay. Welcome <laughs> to the Mark Hunger Show, the show that deals with all things concerning... Marriage. Marriage. I am, of course, your host, the one, the only Mark Gunger. Joining me, as always, the ever-lovely Lady Diane, and, of course, the amazing Philip James Gunger. Engineering the show, as always, the very talented but nearly creepy Timothy Robert Ray, pushing buttons, twisting knobs, and trying to stay awake during the production of this incomprehensibly, immeasurably boring show. This is the show that handles your marital challenges, relational conundrums, and dating dilemmas that you can email to us at ask, A-S-K, at Mark. Gungor.com. What is wrong with my ears? Get your act together. Hello, hello, hello. So also my world's going, making all kinds of weird noises. Anyway, hello, everybody. Are you all right today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Last, last week's sure? show stressed me out. Are you sure? You know what it is. It's okay. <laughs> you know, maybe we need to start avoiding certain types of emails. I mean, we'll have less emails. I don't know. We used to get ton, nothing. Remember, sex, sex emails. We sex, still sex, get sex, sex, quite sex. a few. But we just don't bring them to the show all the time. No, so not that's all, all the show. of them. No. But then the other thing that keeps tripping me up is I have a husband who's doing something really bad. What can I do? Mm-hmm. You force him to stop. Mm-hmm. So if we keep doing these emails, I'm just going to go insane. Because mm-hmm. there's no newer way of saying that. Yeah. I know there's tons of them. There's tons of them. They're desperate. How can I make my husband do... Here's the, you can't make anybody do anything. And people get really, you know, said, you know, oh, he doesn't believe in prayer. I do believe in prayer. I, believe, I have had more miracles. I bet you legitimate turn your head, freak you out, step you back miracles in my life than almost anybody else I've ever met. And mm-hmm. I'm serious. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm talking some serious stuff here. And continue to see. But I don't think any one of them has ever been in the context of making someone do something different. Right. I think that's a line God doesn't cross. It's called free will. He's not going to make someone do something. He's not going to just... God just changed that person to be this, that, or the other. You can pray that, you know, God will bring them to, you know, under conviction, I guess, and if, if they're going to respond to the gospel or something. But some of these guys are already Christians. It's just they behave badly. I don't know. I just... There's a thing called confrontation. Jesus taught when someone's acting really badly, you confront them with one person. If he doesn't listen, you go back with two or three. If he doesn't go, you confront them with the entire congregation. We're talking, who, when's the last time anybody even saw something like that? I've never seen it. No. And then if he doesn't listen, you kick him out. Now, what we do is we'll go once, twice, and then we'll meet with, like, the leadership of the church. And if they don't listen, then we kick him out. But we don't drag him in front of the whole church. I'm not sure people could handle that kind of thing today. But we're still confronting. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Paul talked about confronting bad things. Uh, That's what you do. With really bad behavior, you confront. These women don't want to confront, or men, don't want to confront, because they're afraid. You live in fear. But there is no other answer. In the Old Testament, you know what Solomon's answer was to, to badly behaving people? You beat them. I like that answer. <laughs> I mean, that's what he says, right? I like that answer. How many times he talks about the rod is for the back of fools. Mm-hmm. I mean, you beat the snot. Solomon is the one. Read Proverbs. He's the one, of course, the infamous verse in the Bible about spanking your kids. Of course, everyone's against that today. You know, maybe if we swatted some behinds when they're little, you wouldn't have to throw them in jail when they're adult men. All right? There's a thing where Paul, or Solomon says in Proverbs, People are just hell-bent to do stuff. He says, as a dog returns to his vomit. Mm-hmm. So a fool keeps going back and doing the same stupid things. That's what he says. That's a very gross analogy, but that's what he wrote. It's in the Bible. And the only answer he came up with, <laughs> you beat him. 
<laughs> you beat a fool, you rebuke a fool. That's what it talks about, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not advocating beating anybody and taking a rod and whipping anyone. We don't put people in stocks, although... <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> There's a few people I think could really benefit <laughs> from such a beating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not what I'm advocating. I'm just saying confrontation. I know everybody wants uh, the magic words to say to make somebody stop. Most of you who write me, what can I say to make my husband? There's nothing you can say. There's only things you can do. If you're not willing to confront the reason why you have so many bad things happening is because you allow them. It's just that simple. But then they go to the movies like the war room where all the ladies do all these bad things and we just pray day and night. And How long do they pray? 30 days? I don't know what the movie was. Yeah, I don't remember the days. You know, oh, boy, everything changes. Okay, it's great in a movie with a nice soundtrack and stuff. How about real life? How often do you see that? You don't see it very often. I've never seen it, to be quite honest. The people who change, who are acting badly, are the ones who are forced with their behavior and confronted. But we don't want confrontation. We're trying to find everything else under the sun. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe filter more of those. Maybe that's cool. If you take out sex and that, maybe we don't have any more emails. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. What would you answer if you don't keep answering the same questions over and over? What's that? What would you... What questions would you answer? If we don't you, get if that don't... wide of a variety of questions. They all kind of fall into sex questions, you know, well, badly least, behaving least... questions. That's the bulk of them right there. <laughs> That's like well, getting upset because you answering money questions and people keep spending more than they make. Yeah. So how does Dave, Dave Ramsey do? He just, he just keeps answering the same, the same stupid question yeah, over and over again? It's the same answer all the time. How does he not wind up with a bottle of Jack Daniels and drink himself into a stupor after every show? I mean, that's the same thing over and over and over and over yeah. again? Yeah. In different colors, yeah. And that's yeah. the odd thing. People write, they hear the show. Yeah. They listen to the way I talk to people. Well, they, they hear the that advice that we always give. They, everybody thinks their thing There's is different. different. That's They're, what everybody yeah. thinks. And you exist to let them know that it's not. Yeah. I guess. I don't hey, know. Hey, it's job security. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I just, I just don't. You just yeah. have to realize that you need to be patient because I they just, just need you to be patient with them. I guess. It's they need you my, to. It's not my spiritual. You need more boat day. time. But yeah. Here, we haven't done this for months. I thought you'd be like right on top of it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm, I'm saying. It's, 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 it's like it's we... like a it's like a you open a lid and it just everything comes rushing back out again at you. Like, 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 oh, like have a good couple of like, days here to take there, the shows. There is no other answer. There is none. Well, that's okay. At least just not one them. that I have. Then just tell them kindly with okay. a smidge of compassion. Well, help and... me with that, okay? I d- yeah. and that's the thing. I don't have any more compassion. But Phil, seeing me do this, the lady sitting in your office, I'm looking, I'm talking to her like I or in the audience. You can't do that. But I can't. No, 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 you can't. But it won't work. Of course it'll work. You know what I'm saying? They won't do it. They just won't do it. That's my version of compassion. See, all you can do is say, I'm here to help you. This is the answer that I have. This is the best advice I have for you. You choose whether you're going to do it or not. That's all. That's all you can do. You know what will help is, as I mentioned last week, is this outline I started on this book about how to do it. Yeah. This is how to do it. Imagine some more books. You know what you need to do is buy my book. (laughs) Well, you're on a roll with the books these days, man. Holy stinking cow. We've got some new books coming out. We're very excited about them. We should just talk about the books. There's some hilarious books coming out there. Good stuff. Go ahead. It's your show. You (laughs) can do whatever you want. Should we give them a little preview of some of the books we're working on? All right, let's take a break, and we'll come back right after this, and then we'll give you a little insight of some of the books that are going to be coming soon to the Mark Gunger world. We'll be back right after this. Mark Gunger. Yeah, we've got an app for that. Download your free Mark Gunger app today. (laughs) Mark Gunger here in my sparkly jacket. Here to talk to you about Transition One, a one-year transition gap year program that we have for kids that are coming out of high school and before they go into college. Slow down. Take a year. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things that you want will be added to you. Well, we think, oh, no, no, I got to get the stuff. I got to no, no, you'll get the stuff. God wants you to get, God will help you get your stuff and do life. But slow down for a minute. You don't need to just rush off in a mad burst to try and get all the stuff you can from the world going to some college. And not everybody should even be going to college. There's a whole other sermon. For heaven's sakes, whatever you do, 
take a year, slow down, put God first. This is the most likely time that you'll ever have to take a year and just put God really first in your life. When are you going to do it? After you graduate from college? Not likely. After you get married? Forget about it. When you have kids? Are you kidding? Yeah, maybe when you're 65, <laughs> but then you don't have the energy to go do it anymore. What else are we going to do? It's the perfect time. It's the perfect time. Encourage your young people. They're freshmen right now. So it's a great, listen, I'm telling you, what I want you to do is, and there's several of these programs out there. I think you should come to ours. <laughs> but whatever you do, slow down. Get into your kids' thinking. What we're going to do is you're going to go to high school, and then you're going to do a one-year gap program where you're going to focus on your faith and life and how to do life. And then, after that, you can go to college, you can do whatever else. It'll save you a lot of money. It'll help them focus. They'll be changed forever if you will do this. Go check out our website, transition1.org. Transition1.org. Slow down. Put Jesus first. See what that does for our young people. The movie, the movie, the music of the Reverend Jimmy Bratcher. Check him out at jimmybratcher.com. All right, so um, talking about some of the books that that uh, we've been working on. That uh, this one's already we we got an advanced advanced copy. Mm-hmm. So there's like only three of these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in existence right now. It's called uh, Treat Him Like a Dog. And it's a, it's a cute little book about how to treat your spouse. <laughs> Particularly, it's written for women. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, you know, I say, well, everybody laughs. Well, that's a terrible thing to treat somebody like a dog. No, really? Man, people are nice to their dogs. Mm-hmm. You come home, you kiss the dog, you hold the dog. What does she do? She pets Pet the, the dog. dog. All she the talks stuff. so encouragingly to the dog. It doesn't remind the dog that he pooped all over the no. carpet three hours earlier, bringing up his former mm-hmm. mistakes. I mean, seriously. I mean, people start getting the analogy. Yeah, yes. but people are nicer to their dogs than they are to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, various chapters, we've got... Uh, let just go to the table of contest real quick. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do this in, in detail when the book actually becomes available. There you go. They're, nope, you just missed They're it. literally on a s- slow boat from China. Mm-hmm. Uh, treat them like a boss. Mm-hmm. You know, With the respect. Oh, I'd rather and... respect you. Know, I can't res- These women all know how to respect because mm-hmm. they do it to their bosses all the time. Mm-hmm. They all do it all the time. Mm-hmm. They know how to do it. They just don't want to do it to their husband. Mm-hmm. Well, he's an idiot. Really? Some of you guys work for idiots. Your boss, I mean, come on, look at you. <laughs> I've learned so much working for this idiot, let me tell you. <laughs> but you do what the guy yes. says to yes. do, and you, you yes. don't say so. You would never talk to your boss the way you talk to your husband, because you get fired. Yes. You don't, women don't even think of those. Just treat him like your boss. Treat him like an employee. All the patients that has to go with this. I like this one. Treat him like a gynecologist. Mm-hmm. You can imagine what that's all about. <laughs> treat him like a cab driver. You know what you do when you... Now, some people yell instructions mm-hmm. to the cab drivers, but generally people don't. They're sitting in the back, they're scared half to death. Yeah. And just let just, him do his job. Just let him do his job, and they shout, and they don't know how he's getting there, they have no idea, and they're not barking out in- instructions. Right. You can do that for someone you don't know in a cab, but you can't do that for your own husband. Yeah. Uh, treat him like a personal trainer. You got a trainer, right? Do I do. do that? I do. They yell at you and make you do stuff, and mm-hmm. you don't know, fight back. Treat him like a child, right? Same kind of, almost like a dog mm-hmm. there. Uh, treat him like your phone. The minute the phone rings, boy, you jump at it right mm-hmm. away. And you're going to do everything. Uh, treat them like a stranger. What do you do? People, polite. People are just polite to strangers. Yes. Some of the meanest people in the world, even Mark Unger on his worst day, <laughs> when he runs into a stranger, will be polite to the yes, stranger. Yes, he will be. Right? He will be. Shouldn't be nice to the stranger. Yeah. We can't be nice to our own people, the people we know, and our friends, and our family, and our own spouses. Uh, and then the bonus chapter, because this is for women, is... is uh, don't treat him like your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he ain't your girlfriend. But it's all very, you know, they're, they're, they're illustrated pictures. Can you see this? And uh, they're hard covers and stuff. So they're, they're absolutely gorgeous, easy to read, fun. It's just like a... a anyway, I'm, I'm thrilled with this. I love it. Yeah. So we got some other books coming out that, that's not uh, here. One thing is we went and we redid the, uh, the Battle Over the Rules. Yes. 
the whole book about, you know, should there be rules in our marriages? And, I mean, you know, what about unconditional love and all that kind of stuff? And the first printing of it was horrific. And we did it again and added more to it. Mm-hmm. And it's also now in a hardcover and the great illustrations yes. in it throughout. So that's nice. That's coming out. We have a new book uh, called uh, Don't Be an Ass, which is actually very funny. <laughs> it's, it's actually it's really well done. Diane did most of the work on it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Don't worry, I give I her credit. On the front, yes, it says my name is on the front. And my actually pictures on the, on the back. Yeah, yeah. I am now a published author. She's now a published by author. My name. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Mark Unger and Diane Briley, don't don't be an ass. And we talk about all the intent. And when I'm talking about cursing ass, I'm talking about a stubborn ass. You know, an ass mm-hmm. is a, is as throughout English history has been a stubborn, intransigent animal. Mm-hmm. And people who are stubborn and intransigent and unreasonable are called asses be because ass. they're like that. You know, it's, it's not the cursed version yes. of it or the whatever other version you have. So anyway, the whole thing's got uh, pictures of donkeys on it. Mm-hmm. And it's hilarious. It's brilliant as we talk about all the different kind of... Don't uh, be a lazy ass. Don't <laughs> a be a cheap ass. ass. Don't be a dumb ass. Don't Stumber be a whiny ass. ass. <laughs> Don't be a stupid ass or whatever it was. Dumb ass, I guess. I was yeah, it's a, anyway, it's very, very funny. But it's kind of... So what's the point of the book? It's just kind of a... You kind of hold up a mirror. Sometimes you, if you want to really see what you look like, you got to look in a mirror. And uh, just reading the book, half of it described me. <laughs> well, I will say By there was some inspiration. <laughs> but you look at it. No, because we all act this way at times. Yeah. And you look at it and go, oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. I shouldn't be that way. Yeah. So it's just, you know, what not to do. We talk about what to do. Mm-hmm. This book is just what not yes. uh, to do. Uh, just finished a... Uh, the uh, rewrite of the flag page program, mm-hmm. uh, and we we've called it com- uh, becoming compatible, yes. and it's really so much clearer because the way you be you you get compatible, something I you do it on purpose. It's intentional. People are not just automatically compatible. And I talk. It start, the book starts out talking about what the word compatible means. It's from the Latin word compati, mm-hmm. which literally means if you look it up, look it up. Anybody Google it. Compati. It's the Latin word. It means to suffer with. Yes. I love means, that. I love that. You find someone you can suffer with, and people say they can't relate to it until you give them the extreme. Because in the extreme, when you can't stand anybody but anymore or your marriage breaks up, is because it becomes insufferable. You cannot suffer anymore. Uh, so, you know, the idea of compatible being this automatic, we love everything and think the same is another word for that. It's called delusional. So, uh, so we put it in that context, and it's, again, hardcover, uh, Illustrate the illustrators are working on it right now. The book's written already. Yeah, the that's very good. It. I really I and, like and that one very and much. And it's, it's much easier to understand. It's going to be easier to read. All the flag page people will enjoy that. Just finished a book. I'm ex- really thrilled about uh, called uh, "Being Found." This is for single women who are looking to find a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, it's a great book for any single male or. F- and I think it's actually would be a good book for married women to read mm-hmm. just so you can get a picture of how did I get here? Mm-hmm. Where am I at? I mean, it'll answer a lot of questions for people. Uh, and the reason why you girls who are already married should get it is just so you can start to understand how to teach your kids about this thing. Anyway, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm more thrilled about that book yeah? than anything I think I, I've ever done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was just on a high for days. Yeah. After doing that one, it just felt felt really, really, really good. Uh, and doing this outline now for this book about, you know, uh, confrontation. Mm. So we'll see how that goes. So, so anyway, just, we've just been kind of on a tear running around doing these books, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, when they come out, we'll do a, a show on each one mm-hmm. and, uh, and go into them in detail. And uh, my guess is we're probably still talking two, three months before we see oh, these yeah. now. Yeah, it's kind of a drag. It just takes a while because our printer is very slow. <laughs> but it could be worse if we going to a publisher. That's worse, yes. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> so we're our own publisher and we don't have to placate to anyone. So anyway, so that will uh, give you lots of information. It'll be fun. These will be, be so. And then you can write some questions about the books then. <laughs> so he's not pulling his hair out what's left of it. Are you gonna write, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? That would you know, be helpful. We'll see how that goes. All right, we'll take a break. We'll actually jump into emails yes, now. we will. Right after this break. Attend Mark's Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage event. Visit LaughYourWay.com for upcoming dates and locations. It is down to the river 
where muddy water flows See, I'm tired, I've been carrying a heavy load We're back on the Mark Gunger Show, talking about love, marriage, and relationships, and uh, our upcoming books. Emails, what do you got? Okay, now for a completely different email, just to make you happy. Okay, ready? <laughs> I'll be fine. It's a guy writing. What was that, uh, that show? And now for, for something completely, completely different. different. What was that show? What was Monty that from? Monty Python? Maybe it was. Oh, I've never heard that Maybe phrase it was. before. Google okay. that, Phil. Right. I, no, I think it might be my... I never watched it. Find it okay, he says, I'm engaged to a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. I get along well with her family. However, her siblings are all in their early 20s and still live at home and show all signs of failure to launch. They play video games and watch TV most of the day. They rarely help with the household chores and they don't pay rent. They don't have jobs, aren't going to college, and don't seem to have any ambition towards establishing a career or moving out anytime soon. The parents aren't requiring them to take on any adult responsibilities. My fiance is a stark contrast. She's a hard worker and has taken on many adult responsibilities in her life. I anticipate future problems stemming from this lack of responsibility by her siblings. I'm extremely tempted to approach her parents about this, but I've been advised not to by some of my close friends. I want to be a positive influence in their lives and help spur them on to good works by encouraging them to set some boundaries with their adult children. Oh, I love that. Do you think this... I want to confront them so that I can inspire good behavior. Iron sharpens iron, brother. That's Uh, right. uh, He says, do you think this would be wise to do or should I just leave well enough alone? It's very difficult for me to sit and watch what's happening without intervening, but I also recognize doing this may cause some trouble. Here's what you do. Uh, Instead of doing that, go somewhere in your neighborhood where there's a big uh, nest of of wasps Mm -hmm. and stick your hand in that. (laughs) Do that instead. Take take a bat and hit yourself over the head. Dude, really? You want to stick your hand in that? Mind your own stinking business. Good grief. You want everybody to hate you? Do what you're planning. Couldn't think you of want a the worse family thing to, to do. despise your guts? Oh, you want to start your marriage out in the worst possible way? Stay with your current path. I found all the things that are wrong with my in-laws, Buzz. and I feel that I was brought into their lives to help change them. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work well. Oh my goodness. That'll do I it. I don't for know you. what delusional world you live in, but that's really a bad idea. Don't do that. Mind your own business. Now, as long as you know that your wife, your fiance, is not like that, then fine. And and listen, and I talk about this in this new book about being found. If you can't stand the family and the family drives you insane, you really shouldn't marry the girl. You should go find someone the girl to marry. Now, if you can marry her and tolerate the family and keep your mouth shut, then fine. But yeah. do not... I'm sick of these people. They get married. They can't stand the family. Everything's wrong with the family. As soon as the, you know, after the honeymoon's wore off, they're, he's turning around sticking his finger in everybody's business and trying to straighten out and telling his wife, you're just like your family. You know, you need to stick your head in a toilet. Give yourself a swirly. Where's a nice swirly sound? Here we go. Ta-da. It's been a while since we've had a swirly. All right? Stick your head and just wake yourself out of the delusion. If you can marry into this family and love them and enjoy them and keep your mouth shut and it doesn't drive you crazy, you're on a good path. If this drives you crazy and already you want to say something, you really should leave the girl alone. Mm-hmm. Go marry somebody that you, you like their family. Uh, not, I think he can marry the girl. Sure. Just keep his mouth shut. Yeah. But if you're one of these guys who can't and you got to stick your finger in everything, I'm telling you, you will have a miserable married life. You're going to make her miserable. You're going to make the family miserable. It's, and you're going to be coming to people like me for counseling and sucking the ever-loving life out of us because you're doing stuff that is absolutely destructive. Do not try and fix her family. What you do is you respect, love, and enjoy the family. If you can't do that, this is probably not the girl for you. And that's just the reality of it. Goodness gracious. <laughs> what a bad plan. Stomp on a bee's nest. <laughs> Beat yourself with a bat the next time you think that way. We'll be back right after this. Caution. The Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. Never easy, never sane. It's all so complicated. <laughs> Singing about our emails. <laughs> 
complicated. That's not true. They're not complicated. There's some very simple answers to these things. They make it complicated. Yes. Yes. You know, like, how about you don't try and fix your influence? Right. <laughs> okay, now let's go. <laughs> Easy? No, no, no. no I'm just, okay. Why does that seem so clear to us and not clear to these people? I don't know. I don't know. So I think this will be clear Sometimes to most people. you can't people. see the forest through the trees. This you're just, you're, you're in it, and it... Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever... Well, he said that other I've never people, tried to correct my in-laws. He said ever. other people he talked to about it said, no, this is a bad idea, dude. So clearly, oh, that's right. other he people did, are telling admitted. him, but for some yeah. reason, his thought process was, yeah, yeah. oh, this would be a good idea. And I think he was trying to ward off future trouble no, no, for no. himself. No, 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 you're going to create future that trouble. That will definitely create... But I will say this, if he thinks it is something he can't live with and therefore right. make trouble, he needs to go marry a different girl. Right. He really does. Right. But your friends are telling anybody, really, dude, anybody would tell you what you're thinking. Well, is insanity, almost anybody. Because I have heard, nope, you need to lay down the law and you need to establish what your boundaries are with your family and with the in laws no. right from the start. And no. I think they're absolutely crazy no, when they say marry, those things. You marry somebody else. That's what you do. Yeah. And I said, and we talk about this in this, in this new book. Mm-hmm. You see stuff up front, you deal with it then. If it's not well, uh, palatable, you move on. It's like these women. One of our early shows, a lady who wanted to divorce her husband because he collected beer cans. Mm-hmm. For whatever it drove her reason. crazy. Yeah. And we asked, did you collect, did he do that before you married him? Well, yeah. Well, then shut up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to divorce my husband because he smokes. Okay. Was he smoking before you married? Well, yeah. Well, then stop. Yeah. I just talked to a lady just now, this morning. You know, my husband, I have to support him. For 15 years we've been married, he's never had a job. I asked the question. Was he employed? Was he unemployed when you married him? She hasn't answered. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Yeah. They all do working. this. They go in eyes open. I can't stand the family. I can't do all this. And they get married anyway. What do you think? What? <laughs> People. <laughs> See, that's why I really enjoyed this book. Yes. Because this is the preventative medicine for the stupidity that people have yeah. today. There are so many problems that people have in their marriages that would not exist if they would have just used their brains. Eyes open. Eyes open. Look at what's going on. Think clearly. If this guy cannot handle, and it drives him insane, boy, was he detailed on who does what and, you know, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. Dude, if you can't handle that, cut the girl some slack, you know. Here's the mistake that when it comes to this family find business another girl. that people make, and I've heard it over and over and over again. Well, I'm not marrying her. No. I'm not mar- I'm not, I'm marrying her. I'm not marrying the family. Yes, That's what they are. say. And it's like that is the biggest mistake that you can make is you are too marrying the family and the crazy and the psycho whether you think so or not. Now listen, there's a lot of us who marry into crazy. My wife did. All right? Cuz my family's nuts. Mm-hmm. But she's fine with it. Yeah. She's trying to fix it unless they ask her to fix something yeah. and they usually do. They'll go ask her before they ever ask me. I wonder why. <laughs> okay. Can't imagine why. Wonder why. You know, she's the one everybody goes to, you know. But she doesn't come in criticizing everybody and anything and all the nuts that go on or in, in our family. You know, you can marry into absolute lunatics mm-hmm. as long as you're comfortable with the lunatics. Mm-hmm. My concern with this guy is he's already uncomfortable with the lunatics. Yeah. He wants and he wants to, to straighten them out. That's a terrible sign. You'll never straighten terrible. that out. Not your business. And if he can't handle it, it will make him miserable. I'm serious. I know it sounds horrible. Oh, I love this girl. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. To somebody who cares. <laughs> the re- <gasps> See, no! that's it. That's the problem right there, Phil. <laughs> no, no, the romance. I mean, can't give up my heart. I'm telling you. Because these are the people, Diane, who come later and they I want to get know. a divorce. Because the family has caused so many problems for us. These are I the people know. because they want a divorce. Then we got to deal with that. And the pastors all go through hell with these people. I'm telling you, I know you're in love. With this. Oh, no. I'm telling you, that doesn't mean anything to me. Use your brain. If you can't handle the situation, you break it off with that girl, go find another girl. It's just that simple. Find a girl that you can actually tolerate their family. Now, I would have no problem with her lazy family. <laughs> I wouldn't approve of it. Right. But, but it I wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't you know what? It. I'd go over to the house. I'd lay on them as lazy as the rest of them. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> of course you would. I just lay around all day. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know. Anybody, anybody, somebody go get the remote control because it's, it's, it's on the other side of the room. I can't pick it up. You know, I just make me a ham sandwich. So somebody make me a ham sandwich. Want a ham sandwich? Give me another remote control because that one's ten feet away from me. I can't. Yeah. My, <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I had a brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who used to yell, Mom? You still have a brother. Mom. He's, yeah, he's not dead. Right. Mom, what? Can you change the channel <gasps> for me? And she'd go change the channel for him. Knock his block off. We would off. yell at her. Are I'd you insane? Knock his block what off. Are you change? Mom, can you change the channel? I mean, it's kidding. Pre remote days, <laughs> clearly. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, he had a remote. It was called yeah, Mom. Um, he couldn't two-legged be, remote. He couldn't be bothered to get his butt off the uh, thing. Uh, and, the, and, and what did Mom do? Of course, she went and, and, and changed her channel for her. I just, oh, just so many things. In so I would, I would just enjoy the family. You know, Deb, my wife's family, there are none of them that I'm aware of are devout Christians at all. Mm-hmm. Doesn't bother me. I just go hang with them. Mm-hmm. Just sit around and do whatever they well, do. Well, people just think that they have to be like them. They have to do what I would do and act like I would like. And I had a conversation with somebody yesterday that the family just wasn't. It's like, hey, the family just isn't like you. What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly right. Mm-hmm. So I think he could marry this girl and be totally happy with the lazy, mm-hmm. dysfunctional family. But he's got to love that lazy, dysfunctional family and not tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. You gotta be okay with it. Wow, anyway, okay. Okay, she says, I have been married for 14 years. He started a supposed emotional affair with kissing and touching four years ago. <laughs> And that's that not really emotional, emotional, that emotional anymore. Is that kind of beyond the emotional? They didn't have intercourse. That's the, uh, the gist of it, I we guess. We kiss with our words. We kiss with our right? words. With our eyes, we bat. She says, I thought if he could show me that he truly loved me and was sorry and could show and prove to me that he did love me, we could work it out. Uh-huh. But he doesn't do anything like he used to, and he's always been the talker. Now we only talk about logistical things. I feel so alone even when we're together. Deep down, I knew about it, the one and a half years it was going on, but every time I questioned it, he told me, no way, it's just a co-worker, and I believed him, kind of. Well, right. he got to where he... And, and I can buy that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. He got to where he couldn't keep it up with her when they were having sex, and she really knew that it was because of this other woman. So okay. now it's been two and a half years since it ended. She says, I still feel so alone and so undesired. I tell him over and over what I need from him, and I just get met with resistance. I don't feel I can go on like this. Is there any hope? He is the type that doesn't like being alone, so I feel he's just settling for me because she went back to her husband, and also because he feels bad for doing this to me. But when I say anything, he doesn't get it. He thinks it's because I can't let it go and just move on. He said he's sorry a million times, but his actions aren't there. Look, obviously your marriage was in a very bad place, and now you just need to be intentional and rebuild it, and it takes time. I wish it, I wish she it did. She says he's not putting in to rebuild Well, she it. needs to keep dealing with him about it. But she's seen it now. Everything is in the context of, uh, you know, that's what he did. And the only reason he's still with me is because she went back to her husband. And so she, she, she's not believing anything that he says. You're not giving him a chance. So you're creating some of the bad situation that you're in. If, if you're going to, I've said this before, if you're going to forgive someone, forgive them. I think a lot of women, they don't want to forgive. They just want to torture the guy for the rest of his life. You know, well, there's some men like that, too. Huh? Sorry, you caught me in the middle of a drink. There are some <laughs> men like that, too. Oh, yeah, men, yeah. The people. They're just people like yes. that. Yes. They'll stick around for no other reason mm-hmm. to make sure that you are miserable. Just to for twist the, the knife. Life. Just to keep twisting the knife in you. And that's what they do. And that's, well, they do. Phil's giggling over there. It's no, it's true. true. It's, it's true. I know. It's, it's awful. It. It's awful. And you think, what are you doing? So she's, yeah, well, the only reason he's me is because, you know, he doesn't have her and you want to bring your family. He's here, but he doesn't really want to be here. And what can I do about Well, first of all, you got to lose all that. Mm-hmm. You got to think, listen, all oh, you people. You say, oh, I don't know if they want to be with me. Listen to me. If somebody doesn't want to be with you, they just leave you. This happens every day. I don't know why people, when they decide to stay with them, they keep questioning whether or not they want to be with them. If my wife didn't want to be with me, she would just leave. I don't have to worry about if she wants to be here. If I didn't want to be here, I'd go. Seriously, I well, would just in go. In some cases, well, your age, your kids are grown and flown, but in some cases, people do stay for their family, for the kids, and the spouse knows darn well that that's what they're there for. Okay, I'll concede that. Mm-hmm. But then he wants to be there for the kids. Mm-hmm. He wants to be there, you know. I mean, I don't know what he wants me to say. All I know is <laughs> I she's... I know she was asking you. <laughs> she, she is saying he doesn't really want to be... didn't mention the kids. She says he right. doesn't really want to be here. She just went back. Right. You don't know why she went back or whatever. You know, you're just assuming all kinds of... He's there. 
He wants to do, he's apologized, he's apologized a thousand times. The reason he's still apologizing, why? Because he doesn't feel you have forgiven him. That's why. Every time he says, I'm sorry, you say, oh, he's just saying he's sorry. The reason he's saying he's sorry is because you have not communicated to him that it's done. You are still reliving it. For a year and a half, how long has it been? Two and a half years now? Two and a half years since it yeah, ended. You're still living it. You're still living it. You're still living it. When you wrote this letter, you're still living it. Next year, you'll still be reliving it. Ten years from now, you'll still be reliving it. You haven't forgiven it. Not, you know, either leave the guy or forgive him. Don't play this game. You need to just forgive him. He wants to be there with you. Forgive him. How long is it going to take to rebuild? I don't know. A lot longer if you keep doing this. I would highly recommend that you go online to affairrecovery.com and see all of the information and articles and videos and everything they have. Because they deal with, you know, full-blown affairs, emotional affairs, all of that. But there is some fabulous information to help people. Affairrecovery.com. Those guys do a really great job. All right, so you just you do it on purpose. Do not. And a lot of you do this. You guys do something terrible. He finally breaks it off. And now all you do is remind him of what he did. That's just cruel. And you're not being helpful. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Want more of Mark? Visit markgunger.com. There you will find everything that Mark has to offer. We're back. Mark Gunger, Diane, and Phil answering your emails. I have to tell you, I had so much fun hanging with Jimmy and Sherry Bratcher when they did those concerts, when I spent those days down in Kansas City with yeah. them. Just going on with Jimmy when he's doing his gigs is, was super fun. Yeah, we went, uh, really great. we went to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally this summer, and uh, we opened for uh, Willie Nelson, which is, that was an experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, when he shows up... Uh, Hell's Angels pour into the place and they secure the area. So they push everybody back, you know. To, and then the, Nelson's bus door opens up and plumes of smoke. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Come rolling out. Because <laughs> he's a pothead mm-hmm. by his own admission. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then he gets out and he, and he does his gig. The guy's 83, stone out of his ever loving mind. <laughs> the concert was horrible. It, and I've heard this from several people now that I've people mm-hmm. know I went and heard him and they all was stunned. It is bad. It is it is the worst concert <laughs> I've ever been to in my life. I mean, I've been to junior high. You better know, better uh, than that. What do you call those recitals? Fans. Oh, recitals. You know, that were better. I mean, it was awful. talent shows. He he's uh his guitar sounds terrible, that old beat-up thing that he has. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe he held on to that because it was such a great-sounding guitar. Mm-hmm. It sounded like a Sears and Roebuck thing that you know, we bought when we were 12. It was awful. And he's, he's, he's rushing everything in the band. I feel bad for the band because he's got these mm-hmm. pro guys that play for him. And their job is just trying to stay with Willie because he's all mm-hmm. over the place. It's awful. His sister played the piano with him. She's as old as he is and probably stoned, and uh, she was as bad as he was. And it, uh, oh my when he would sing on rare occasion, it was neat because he's got a great voice. It's just that nobody's got a voice like him. But most of the time, he just said the words. Talk. He'd, say, he'd say real fast. Talk sing. <laughs> you know, like, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> you know, just. Uh, but, you know, half the crowd was as stoned as he was, and I don't think... Right, they don't didn't think, care. It was really... What was fun is you're sitting there watching this legend, yeah. you know, Willie Nelson. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Willie doesn't listen to the show. So. I'm sure not. <laughs> but any Willie, Willie Nelson fans, uh, clearly he was not always this way, mm-hmm. or he never got to where he is. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying right now... It's not a good thing. At some point, you need to stop. Oh, on the other hand, if every time you step out on a stage, somebody gives you $150,000, what are you going to do? I'm in. <laughs> so, I'm in. I'll go stand up there and sound terrible. My son will keep pushing me up on stage. <laughs> right? Come on, old man, get up there. He doesn't know what he's saying, but every time he gets up there, he gets a couple hundred grand. Dad, get up there. You got to do it again. Yeah. So anyway, but it was fun. It was fun okay. doing the concert. Okay. Now, another totally, completely different email for you. She says, I'm ready to flush my husband's iPhone. My <laughs> husband and I recently created our flag pages. I am peace perfect. 
and he's peace fun. We are both soft natured. Our current struggle is phone use. We have three teenagers and our rule has always been no cell phones at the dinner table. My husband is the one that breaks this rule most often. We spend a lot of time volunteering at church. The beginning of this year was very busy for us and I felt we needed a getaway to just reconnect and he agreed. So the rules of the little getaway was no phones. I went so far as to buy a burner phone so that we could turn on our other phones off and just the children would have the number to get a hold of them in case of an emergency. Again, he agreed. He admits that his phone obsession is an issue, so while we were on our marriage rejuvenating trip, he suggested we take a nap after a very long eight-mile hike on the beach. While I was asleep, he decided to turn on his phone (laughs) and check texts and Facebook. While he has apologized because I got upset about it, he really doesn't understand the problem because he says I was sleeping anyway. I don't know how to get him to understand why I feel like I or we are not enough for him when his phone pulls his attention away from us. Is this a fun country nature thing that he has to be connected to everyone all the time or do I just need to get over it? No, the mistake you're making is that you care what he thinks. Why does she care what he thinks? Read, read, uh, the Which last part? paragraph. I don't know the, when she talks about. He's apologized. Be, uh, while he's apologized because I got upset about it, he doesn't really understand the problem okay. because I was no, sleeping hold, anyway. Hold, hold, hold. You don't got to care. You don't care. Why do you care if he understands the problem? He doesn't have to understand anything. No phone. Apparently, she set the rule. No phone. There was no phone until she fell no asleep. Phone. And then she got mad, and he well, apologized. I got mad because he doesn't understand. It doesn't matter if he understands. My wife doesn't care if I understand what she says. But he keeps breaking the rules. So she thinks if he understands the rules and understands her feelings about it, he'll quit doing it. No. No, he will no. not. You just set the rule. Okay, we're going to have dinner. Everybody turn your phones off. Just that. Turn them off. Turn them off or no food. It's very simple. Okay, everybody turn their phone off. Boom. Now we sit and have dinner. Well, he still wants to. What do you care what he still wants to no. do? If he it's, actually pulls the phone out and turns it on table, while you're still eating, I would take I would whatever take you're serving away. and I would throw it at him. That's it. All done. <laughs> let, me, let me show you what this chicken looks like up close. Mm-hmm. You know, she doesn't know why he doesn't care and he doesn't understand. And she set these rules and he snuck out of the rules. Well, wow. because she thinks if he had understood it, no. he wouldn't do it. No. If she can only get him to understand, no, then the behavior will wrong. stop. That's where she's wrong. That's where these women are always wrong. You. If he just understood. What I, no. Mm-hmm. What do you care what he understands? What do you care what he feels? Why do I have to ask my husband to do it? If I have to ask him to repeat it, I might as well not do it yourself. Well, then do it yourself. You know? Why do I got to repeat? Because he doesn't want to do it. Well, it's such a shock to women. See, here's the thing. It's not that they, I, they can't get the guy to do it. They want him to want to do it. Well, because that means he really loves her and he's doing no, it for her. No, it means her. you're delusional. That's what they think. And you're still having remnants of smoking marijuana when you were a teenager. <sighs> for heaven's sakes. Who, my wife does not care if I want to take out the garbage. Doesn't care. She doesn't care if I'm, <laughs> whatever rule I got to follow. She has no interest in what I think of it. In fact, the reason it's a rule is because I don't want to do it. So the rule has to be made. Well, that's what a rule is. Mm-hmm. The reason you have the rule, you wouldn't have the rule if nobody did it. Do you want to go the speed limit? No. That's why there's a rule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the police don't sit there. I don't know why we post that everywhere. You know how much money we have spent putting up these signs and these guys, I don't know why they just can't do it. Because they don't want to do it. Can you imagine what if you, you did that with your kids? Oh my it's not if your kids just followed the rule. It's the fact that they don't want to follow the rule. Yeah. You, I mean, you'd be he a didn't want to come home at the curfew time. Uh, he came home. I know he came home by midnight, but I know sure, he didn't they want ate their to. their vegetables, but they didn't want to eat their vegetables. What do I do to change it? Well, there's women I, like that. How do I get them to I know want that's to? A, that's you can just point that stuff out. I mean, that's, yeah. so my wife and I argue about phones, but if we turned it into an emotional ought against ourselves the fact that I'm on my phone when she doesn't want me to be or vice versa. I mean, yeah, it would get mm-hmm. nasty. I want you to want me more than you want that phone. <laughs> We're not trying to change that. Uh, yeah, why make it into a big thing? Just shut the phone off and just have your rule. This is the rule. We're going to shut the phone off. <laughs> Actually, this is a new rule in the Gunger house. We just came down last night <laughs> at lunchtime. You watched today at lunch. No phone. phone's off. Turn the phone off. She's had it. She she's had it with you in your phone. In my phone. That's it. Although she's as guilty as I am sometimes. I won't watch. She's still on her phone. Okay. Just shut, just shut the phone off. So no nobody phone cares. meals? Is that what the rule That's is? That's the rule. Nobody no. cares that anybody else even wants the rule. Mm-hmm. 
Nobody wants a rule. Nobody wants to Who be told wants what to rule? do. Who wants a rule? I don't want a no. rule. I want to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so yeah. just relax, dear. It's fine. You just set the rule and enforce the rule. Well, he doesn't want to do it. That's why it's a rule. Mm-hmm. We, don't, we don't want to do it. No. We don't want to do it. <laughs> I got to do it. My wife's making me do what you're doing to your husband. I feel his pain, and I don't want to do it. But you know what? I'm going to do it. And if she finds out secretly, I wish it was on, oh, she's not going to care. Mm-hmm. And she won't be writing me <laughs> on my show about uh-huh. it. All right. Break. We'll be back with the final segment right after this. Have a marriage dilemma? Email your questions to ask at markgunger.com and Mark can answer them during one of our shows. Steam milk, lots of froth, mix a mustache and a look to lick it off. Yeah. <laughs> one thing's for certain, Love this, song. this much I know. It's always brewing and it's not your average job. The music of Michael O'Brien. Check it out, michaelo.org. I'm doing a gig with Michael. You are? Yeah, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. When? End of October. Ah. Where's my calendar? How come I can't see my calendar? I want to go see it. <laughs> oh, I is. love him. You know, they always do these updates and they change things. Yeah, I know. And then they and put I it in a different it. place. I just finally figured Don't, out where I, the stupid thank thing you, is. you, old man. I'm an you old man. My pain. And then all of a sudden they change. Like, where'd he go? What, Don't what, do that. You've I, changed my little icons. And it's like, I, that's why I refuse to do the updates on my phone until I have to because it'll change something that oh, I don't like. Oh, it drives me nuts. We should no. just have a get off my lawn segment. Almost. You two can go on <laughs> and We're on. We're just the old about. people. Come on. Get off my lawn. All the things that have you changed. Crazy kids. And... That's hilarious. October 27th. October 27th. Chattanooga, Tennessee. 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 That's what I live in. Tense. Tennessee. Chattanooga, first Tennessee. things first. Conference. First things, yes. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Be, anyway, uh, he's going to do his music and I'm doing the talk. So it'll be good to see him. Well, I don't want to hear your O'Brien. talk. I want to hear his music. No, no, I get that. I, I think... <laughs> I think you've heard enough of it. I've seen the fact. So has everyone else. That's why the show is coming to an end. See ya! 